Hello, and welcome to Zach's Shopping for Stocks. I'm your host, Maddie Johnson, an editor here at Zach's. Today is May 16th, and there has been an insane amount of retail news this past week, both good and bad. So today I want to kind of do a rundown of what's been happening in this embattled industry. So let's begin with Coach's announcement that it is buying handbag rival Kate Spade in a deal worth $2.4 billion. So Coach is an an iconic American luxury retailer and has been trying to remake its brand, cutting back on promotional discounts and pulling its products out of department stores. I've had Coach products before. My mom has had Coach products before. My grandmother has Coach products. So it just Coach is just this standard, this stalwart American retailer. Uh, it sells handbags. It sells uh, wallets, luxury accessories. It sells clothes. A recent example of coach that I can think of is Selena Gomez wore a coach gown to the Met Gala the first Monday in May, just a few weeks ago. So so scooping up a fun, flirty, and younger brand like Kate Spade should help them in this transformation. So under the terms of the deal, coach will pay $18.50 per share for Kate Spade, and that represents a 27.5% premium to the closing price of shares of Kate on December 27th, 2016. Both company boards have approved the transaction, and the deal is expected to close in the third quarter of calendar 2017. And Coach hopes to employ the same business strategies at Kate Spade that it did at its own brand. So Kate saw a decent boost last year, raking in revenues of $1.38 billion, but its shares have lost a about 9.1% year to date. And the company even came under pressure last year from an activist hedge fund since its profit margins fell well below its rivals. This is huge news in the luxury retail market. My friends were talking about it all day, all day when it, I think it, uh, when did the news break last Monday? And the news was, had been continued to talk about all last week. But moving on to um, another buyout, uh, more of a rumor though, was that according to a Reuters report, struggling mall retailer Abercrombie & Fitch is apparently considering putting itself up for sale. So shares of the company spiked 13% as a result last week on this news. So Reuters, who cited people familiar with the situation, said Abercrombie has hired investment bank Perella Weinberg Partners, fingers crossed I said the name right, to field potential takeover interest. However, there is no certainty that any deal will occur, the sources added. Abercrombie was once a fashion stable for teens in the U.S., and I want to stress once, it's definitely not a staple among teenagers' wardrobes anymore, or at least the majority of teenagers anymore. They were known for its popular denim and logo stamped t-shirts and sweaters. And again, I loved Abercrombie and Fitch growing up. I had their moose pole, like their moose branded polos. I had oh, their denim. They were it's my favorite brand of denim. But the rise of fast fashion powerhouses like Forever 21, H&M, and Zara, they Honestly, it proved too much for Abercrombie, and they these brands swiftly stole its core customer base, including those of its mall peers like American Eagle Outfitters, Aeropostale, and Wet Seal. But business-wise, Abercrombie shares are currently trading at a 17-year low, which will either make it a great value buy or an incredibly volatile acquisition, depending on your view of the retail industry. Abercrombie's operating income has shrunk to $15.2 million last year, from $72.8 million in 2015, though the company has been trying to revamp its brand image and win back customers. And one of its ways to win back customers has been redesigning its stores. So as investors and its customers are likely aware, its stores are notoriously dark and they smell like Abercrombie cologne. Well, one of the ways they're trying to bring the customers back into the stores is make it brighter and just like make it less like a nightclub, which, you know, I think anything to make shopping feel like less like you're going into a nightclub is always a good thing. But moving on to earnings, as you know, we're going heading into the tail end of the Q1 earnings season. So last Thursday, department store giant Macy's reported its first quarter financial results, and they were so disappointing the entire retail industry faced a massive sell-off that day. So Macy's posted adjusted earnings of $0.24 per share, 
which fell short of the Zacks estimate of $0.35 cents per share. Revenues came in at $5.338 billion, also missing our consensus estimate of $5.469 billion and declining 7.5% year-over-year. Comparable store sales, and this is on an owned plus license basis, dipped 4.6% for the quarter, while at owned locations, comps fell 5.2%. Fellow department stores Coles and Dillard's reported that day as well, and they also disappointed investors, and almost every major apparel retailer was down as a result. And this, is, was, this was on Thursday, last Thursday. So J.C. Penney's, Sears, G3 Apparel, and that owns a lot of random brands, like right off the top of my head, Vince Camuto, uh, Cena Group, and I believe that owns Loft and Ann Taylor, and Ralph Lauren and Gap, just to name a few. And not even Nordstrom's decent earnings report last Thursday after the bell could save it from investor panic. So Q1 earnings season is finally winding down, as I said, though we still have some big names in, in the industry who have yet to report, like Target, Costco, Walmart, and Alta. But it's not all bad. So despite all of this, there's still some companies in the retail industry who have managed to escape this dark cloud of disappointment. But there's a little background that I want to give you guys. So since the start of 2017, more than 3,200 store closures have been announced. That's an insane number. But many are, and many are huge but unsurprising names like Macy's, JCPenney, and Sears. Mall staples like the Limited and BB have closed down their entire brick-and-mortar fleet to focus just on online sales. And this is just the tip of the iceberg, as retailers, especially those that sell apparel, have been hit hard by years of declining sales and customer traffic due to the rise in online shopping and, of course, Amazon. But there are some corners of the retail industry that Amazon still can't fully dominate, helping companies operating in these parts expand their store count instead of shrink it. Discount stores like the Dollar General and the Dollar Tree are crushing it right now. And I, I mean, I don't, I don't remember the last time I've ever been into a dollar store, but, you know, kudos to them. And the same goes for Ross stores, TJX companies, and, which owns TJ Maxx, Home Goods, and Marshalls. And disclaimer, I love Home Goods. If I could live in a Home Goods, I would, hands down, I would move there immediately. In Burlington stores, U.S. shoppers began shifting towards these discount stores during the recession, with most never going back to shopping full price after the economy bounced back from that difficult time period. So consumers can can expect all of these com- companies to expand uh, and open new stores this year and not close ex- existing locations. And even grocery giants like Aldi and its German cousin Lidl, and I, that is how you pronounce it, I did look it up, Lidl, Kroger, Walmart, and Sprouts Farmer's Market are expanding this year, too, while Alta in in its beauty rival, Sephora, are growing their star count as well, since the beauty industry thrives in large part on its brick-and-mortar stores. So, like I said, this industry is embattled, as we know. Amazon is killing them slowly, not so softly. But there's some good part, like, there's some good aspects of the retail industry to keep in mind. So, discount retailers, e-commerce-based retailers as well. So there's still there's still some hope, but again, our traditional apparel retailers are are having a really tough go of it. Macy's oh, ooh, that was a that was a tough one, but um, we'll see what we can expect from our big box stores like Target and Walmart. And Alta always a bright spot, so looking forward to that report as well. But I think that does for it for today's episode of Shopping for Stocks. Thanks for listening. And remember, if you think I missed anything or if you have a topic in mind you think should be covered, shoot me an email at podcast at zax.com. You can also check out all of our other exclusive audio content at zax.com slash podcast. And remember to subscribe and leave a rating on iTunes. Thanks for joining and I'll see you next time in the Zax Shopping for Stocks podcast.